Have you ever checked out the horror anime Tokyo Ghoul? Well, today we're going to be talking about the live action anime adaption and its new sequel, Tokyo Ghoul S. So don't go clicking on some other person's vlog or unboxing or for God's sake, somebody else's review on the same thing. What's up guys, I'm Journey. Usually Art's the one that does all the nutshell reviews, but today I'm stepping in so I can test out some new graphics I made him and also to do a review on an anime movie that Funimation sent me, Tokyo Ghoul S. Thank you Funimation, send me more. Before we start, hit that like button or I'm going to steal all the left pairs of socks you have so you're stuck only wearing the right. Okay, let's go. Why is my room so hot? If you haven't seen the anime, or read the manga or seen the live action, no worries, let me give you a quick rundown. Or, hear me out, you can hit that watch later button and come back when you're ready. Time codes are also provided down below. In modern day Tokyo, Japan, people fear what has come to be known as ghouls. Imagine a cross between a vampire and a zombie with a vegan attitude when it comes to what they eat. Ghouls can only survive from consuming human flesh. Any other food will taste terrible and make them sick to their stomach, with the exception of coffee. Because obviously life would be unbearable without coffee. Am I right? For the people of Tokyo, the most terrifying part of ghouls is that they look and mostly act like everyone else. But when they ghoul out, their eyes turn black with red pupils, and each and every one of them possess a kagune. That is an extra appendage on their back resembling a tail that is different in attribute depending on the ghoul. Because of the ghoul threat, the government formed an organization called the CCG, Commission of Counter Ghoul. Ghoul investigators or doves are entrusted in hunting down and exterminating all ghouls they come across by using kinke, weapons forged with kagune from past slain ghouls. From what I've been told, the live action is more closer to the original manga source than the anime. Personally, I've only ever watched the anime and well, also the live action movies now. I'll eventually get around to reading it. Our stories about Kaneki Ken, a socially awkward book nerd that lands a date with his crush, the beautiful Rise. He got lucky and boy does he hit the jackpot with her. Cause it turns out she was a very hungry ghoul. And at the end of the day, she goes to town on him, and not in the good way. But as luck would have it, as he's struggling to stay alive, Risa gets crushed by a bunch of heavy construction beams. But wait, there's more. Her organs get transplanted into Kaneki to save his life. So at this point, you can kind of get what direction we're heading, right? Kaneki Ken becomes the first ever half ghoul, half human hybrid. As he struggles to adapt to this new change, he is taken in by a secret ghoul-owned coffee shop called Anteniku, which harbors and assists lost ghouls. Anteniku is kinda like a shelter or a halfway house for ghouls. There, he meets Kirishima Toka, another young ghoul that trains Kaneki to defend himself and protect the people he cares for. <laughs> Tokyo Go S is directed by Kazuhiko Hiramaki and Takuya Kawasaki and is a direct sequel to the original 2017 movie. This movie introduces Shu Sukiyama, or how the other ghouls call him, the Gourmet. How can I describe him? You guys remember American Psycho with Christian Bale? Well, imagine him, but as a Japanese zombie vampire that watches way too much Food Wars. <laughs> The gourmet is what I would call a ghoul foodie. His main interest is eating humans with rare qualities, like uh, twins or people with heterochromia. Let me take that back. It's not an interest, it's a fetish. So what is rarer than a half human, half ghoul? 
So while Shu dreams of Kaneki Sushi, Kaneki continues to struggle with his new ghoul lifestyle. He's an orphan, so the only person he has in his life is his best friend Hide. Toka, being the grunge emo chick she is, advises Kaneki to drop his friendship with Hide if he wants to keep him safe. She then sets an example by dropping her own human best friend. Shu finally meets Kaneki in person and takes the opportunity to undress him with his eyes and ask him out on a coffee date. Which Kaneki accepts! At this point, I'm like, bro, everyone knows you should never follow the creepy guy into the white van. Kaneki then receives information that his accidental ghoul transformation may not have been an accident. But in order to receive the information, he will need to convince the creepy guy to take him to dinner at a secret underground ghoul restaurant. Seriously, I, I, I can't stress enough how weird Shu is. Like, at at the restaurant he was staring at Kaneki like like I stare at Hot Pockets except I don't want to go American Pie on my Hot Pockets there was this napkin scene he had a napkin with some of Kaneki's blood on it and he sniffed it he sniffed it how like a pervert psycho would sniff panties he sniffed it until he passed out on the floor of the bathroom. <laughs> Moving on. The fight choreography wasn't half bad. There was this sweet bully beatdown scene, which I have to say was my favorite scene in the whole entire movie. I just really wish there was more Kagane action, but I guess special effects can get pretty expensive. Now let's rate the movie. We have awesome must watch, damn fine movie, Good dumb fun, watch when you're bored, and avoid at all costs. Apart from being bloody as hell, this movie has a good pace, along with some decent fight scenes mixed in with supernatural abilities. Yet, here comes the butt. Since this is a live action remake, it seems to be catered more towards the fans who have followed the series prior to watching the live action films. That makes it a bit harder to become more invested and follow along. Which is okay, because at the end of the day, it's about the audience that's actually going to be watching the movie that's going to appreciate it. Like the World of Warcraft movie. Great movie, but only WoW fans truly loved it. So I rate this movie, good dumb fun. It's not Ruroni Kenshin, but if you're a Tokyo Ghoul fan, then it's definitely worth the watch. So what do you rate this movie? Vote in the poll above. I'm gonna link some sources and the trailers in the description. Also, let me know what your favorite anime is in the comments down below. Maybe I can review one of them. I would also like to send a special thank you out to Funimation for providing us a screener for this movie. Seriously, send me more. I'm Journey, I love ya, I adore ya, and I'll see you next time here on Movie Melee.